The flute part at the end of the Concord is only a minute and a half of music, but it is crucial in creating the mood of the ending. Ives did compose an alternate version for when a flute is not available, and I've performed the work both ways, with the flute and without. But I knew that to record this piece, the flute was a must. I was so fortunate when the phenomenal Emmy Ferguson agreed to join this project. I remember going upstairs with Steve and Emmy to listen to our takes of the ending, and Steve and I exchanging a look, saying, oh my god, when we heard the beauty of her phrasing and how her last notes trailed away into the atmosphere. From the moment that Emmy and I first rehearsed until it all came together on stage in Rockport, I knew she was contributing something special. For me, this is incredibly exciting to get to play the Ives Concord Sonata, especially with Reed. It has so many things that, you know, to me, resonate so beautifully. I moved to the United States when I was 10, and I moved to the Boston area. And of course, if you go to school or grow up in the Boston area, you learn about Thoreau. You learn about Ives and just driving around New England and knowing that all these different places are these beautiful spots that Ives captured in his music and all the people who are also there is incredibly special. So to get to bring this particular piece to life with Reed and to join him at the very, very end of this masterpiece tour through Concord, Massachusetts is incredibly exciting because Thoreau himself was a flute player. And not only was he just a flute player, he actually played an instrument um, a, a quite different to this, but one that I am very familiar with, which is an, an older wooden instrument with just a couple keys. And um, that instrument was gifted to him by his brother. And what's so wonderful about the flute is because of its you know, size, its ability to travel, it became an incredibly popular instrument for people to play with each other socially, sort of just in the living room. And I think we all know what that feels like or what we, we want that to feel like after this year of not being able to see and experience live music. So getting to create it with your family at home. And so he and his brother would often um, play duets on these instruments. And of course, Ives, you know, thinking about Thoreau, um, you know, couldn't pass up the opportunity to sneak in that little bit of flute goodness at the end um, of this incredible journey that he takes you through with Reed on the piano. There's something so haunting about the sound of the flute floating in from offstage. Ives' most magical touch comes at the end of the work, just when the listener might think that he had exhausted all possibilities of sound. This flute solo is a revelation. It's one of those indelible moments in music that stays with a listener for days and weeks and for a lifetime after they've heard the piece. <laughs> well, for me, it's just a total joy and pleasure to be here and, and to get to share this music and be on this just killer piano album, which how many flute players get to say that they get to join one of the most incredible pianists on this repertoire is, is for me a real highlight. Um, and Beethoven, Ives, 
I mean, it really doesn't get much better than that. So it's an absolute joy.